Welcome to section 13 of Parasites. This is our parasite overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Ascaris lumbricoides, or giant roundworm, which you can see right here. This scene will take place at a construction site, and we can already see quite a bit of drama going on. This little guy is pretty upset because this big bully is breaking his phone. As you can see, the little guy does not appreciate this, and he's swearing with a pretty fierce anger. To spare you from this vulgar language, we've shown several asterisks, but you can probably imagine what he's saying. In any case, asterisk sounds like Ascaris. So this guy swearing here should help you remember that this image is all about Ascaris lumbricoides. Another name for this organism is giant roundworm. And to help you remember this, we've shown a giant man next to the little guy. So giant bully for giant roundworm. As we showed in our overview figure, Ascaris lumbricoides is a nematode or roundworm. So just like in our last video, we've included a merry-go-round to the scene to help you remember that this is a roundworm or nematode. Again, this scene is about a construction crew, so just think of them being hired here to work on the amusement park. Next, notice that we've shown a guy who just stepped in a big pile of poop. Now he's lifting up his foot in disgust. By now, hopefully you know that this is our symbol for fecal oral transmission. So Ascaris lumbricoides exhibits fecal oral transmission. All right, let's turn our attention back to the little guy swearing. You can see that now we've shown some mud around his shoes, and he's swearing pretty violently, so a bunch of spit is spewing out of his mouth. The shoes he's wearing are actually loafers, which sound like Loeffler syndrome. Also, this spit coming out of his mouth should make you think of pulmonary symptoms, which are suggestive of Loeffler syndrome. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides causes Loeffler syndrome. The pathophysiology of Loeffler syndrome can be a bit confusing, so we've included this diagram here, which is about the life cycle of organisms that can cause Loeffler syndrome. Before we discuss the diagram, you should know that there are three parasites that can cause Loeffler syndrome. They include Ascaris lumbricoides, Strongyloides stercoralis, and hookworms. We'll discuss Strongyloides stercoralis and hookworms in the next two videos. Okay, with this in mind, let's discuss the pathophysiology. As you can see, eggs, or larvae, enter the host, which may be through fecal-oral transmission or through the skin depending on the specific parasite. In the case of Ascaris lumbricoides, eggs or larvae are ingested, which then enter the gastrointestinal tract. Regardless of how the parasite enters the host, eventually these pathogens can enter the bloodstream. Here, they disseminate to the lungs and penetrate the alveoli. Once in the lungs, they can cause pulmonary symptoms, including a cough and wheezing. At the same time, a peripheral blood smear may reveal eosinophilia. And these transient findings are termed Loeffler syndrome. It's important for you to know that these findings are transient and typically resolve after several weeks. This is because the parasites ascend the trachea and then descend into the gastrointestinal tract where they cause gastrointestinal problems. It's within the gastrointestinal tract that the adult parasite takes up residence and releases eggs in the intestines. So you can see from our chart that we've shown that the mature helminth lives in the gastrointestinal tract and that eggs are released in the intestines. In the case of Ascaris lumbricoides and hookworms, the mature parasite remains in the gastrointestinal tract and the eggs hatch once they're outside of the host in feces. So they cause infection in a new host and then the cycle can begin again. However, in the case of Strongyloides, notice that the eggs hatch inside of the host within the intestines. This can then result in repetition of the cycle. We'll discuss this in more detail when we cover Strongyloides. For now, it's most important for you to know that Ascaris lumbricoides can cause Loeffler syndrome, and also to be familiar with the general life cycle of the parasite, as we've just discussed. So again, Ascaris lumbricoides can cause Loeffler syndrome. All right, now you can see that we've added another construction worker that is working on the valve of a pipe connected to a large hose. The hose can be thought of as a symbol for the gastrointestinal tract, and the valve represents the ileocecal valve. The fact that it's broken and requires his attention should help you think of obstruction. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides may cause obstruction at the ileocecal valve. Recall from anatomy that the ileocecal valve is located at the transition point where the small intestine ends and where the colon begins, right here. Now you can see that some water is spraying out of the hose. I guess the pressure that was building up was too high, so it caused a perforation in the hose, and now water is spewing out all over the place. The perforated hose should help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides can cause intestinal perforation. If you return to the image, you can deduce that in the case of Ascaris lumbricoides, the immature parasites perforate the gastrointestinal tract, which is how they gain access to the bloodstream and ultimately cause Loeffler syndrome. Now we've added a guy who's getting sprayed in the mouth by water. This is to help you remember that once the pathogen has penetrated the gastrointestinal tract, it disseminates to the lungs and then ascends up into the mouth. 
So the organism migrates to the mouth and nose before descending back into the gastrointestinal tract. All right, now you can see that we've added some banana trees behind the workers. This is our symbol for the biliary tree. So we've included this in the image to help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides may cause biliary obstruction. Next, notice that we've added another construction worker guy that appears to have found some interesting colored rocks on the ground. The crew was called to this site in the first place because there was an obstruction with the water system. Maybe the rocks here have gotten inside of the water supply, which was responsible for the obstruction. In any case, this guy is examining these rocks very closely, and the rocks kind of resemble eggs. So this is here to help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides is diagnosed by detecting knobby-coated oval eggs in the feces via microscopy. This is an image of an Ascaris lumbricoides egg right here. You don't really need to memorize the exact structure of an Ascaris lumbricoides egg. You just need to recognize that it's an egg from a parasite and that many of the parasite eggs look similar to one another. You'll almost always be given a clinical scenario that is suggestive of a diagnosis, and the image of the egg will be there to help you realize that you're dealing with a parasite. So don't freak out if you can't memorize the exact structure of each of these eggs. All right, remember the little guy swearing violently at the big bully? Well, he was yelling and swearing because the big bully was bending his phone. And just like in the last video, we've included this to the image to help you remember that Ascaris lumbricoides is treated with bendazoles. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A six-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his mother because of a one-month history of intermittent right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Upon further inquiry, she states that a month or so ago, he developed a cough, which has since resolved. Physical examination reveals mild discomfort in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. A stool culture is shown below. This patient is at risk of developing which of the following? A. Myocarditis, B. Appendicitis, C. Visual impairment, or D. Seizures. All right, let's go through the key points. First, the boy has a one-month history of intermittent right upper quadrant abdominal pain. This is a pretty unique symptom when considering a parasitic infection, and should immediately make you think of Ascaris lumbricoides. The only other parasite that causes biliary problems that you need to know for step one is Clonorchis sinensis. However, he also had a cough a month or so ago which is suggestive of Loeffler syndrome. And this is unique to Ascaris lumbricoides, Strongyloides, Stercoralis, and hookworms. Finally, a stool culture shows a parasitic egg, which you can see in the image right here. Collectively, these features are diagnostic for Ascaris lumbricoides. So the correct answer is B, appendicitis. From the image, recall that the parasite may cause obstruction at the ileocecal valve, which is represented by this guy here working on the valve. The ileocecal valve is in very close proximity to the appendix, so if this area is obstructed, then it can result in intestinal obstruction and even appendicitis. From the image, you can see the ileocecal valve right here, and that the appendix is very close to this region, which you can see right here. Myocarditis is suggestive of Toxocara canis, but this does not cause Loeffler syndrome, and isn't typically associated with biliary colic, so A is incorrect. Visual impairment can be caused by several parasites, such as Toxocara canis, Oncocerca volvulus, and Loa Loa. But again, these aren't typically associated with biliary colic and don't cause Loeffler syndrome, so C is incorrect. Finally, seizures are suggestive of Toxocara canis or Tenia solium, but these do not cause biliary colic or Loeffler syndrome, so D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is B, appendicitis. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Ascaris lumbricoides.